Chinese companies have come with a flurry of announcements in quantum computing just in the past month. IBM should be worried, one headline said. U.S. intelligence community veteran warns about China's quantum computing progress, reads another. Brad Smith President of Microsoft warns that the United States cannot afford to fall behind, which, according to CNBC, is because then banks might not be able to keep transactions private. That sounds very alarming. I've had a look. End of last year, researchers from the University of Science and Technology in China in Hefei announced that their quantum computer, Su Chongxi 3, which works with superconducting circuits like those of Google and IBM, is on par with Google's Willow chip that has about 105 qubits. That's when Americans began to panic, but that was only the beginning. In May, the Chinese company Origin Quantum announced Tianji 4. Point zero, a quantum computing platform that should be able to work with more than 500 qubits and that you see here in this alleged photo of a photo that someone's taking of a model of the computer. Global News reports that the company's director Guo Guo Ping told them that the company has already run over 380,000 tasks for more than 26 million users all over the world. Honestly, that's really impressive. It's a lot more than I have expected. 26 million users of a quantum computer that can't do anything useful. But are these numbers remotely plausible? 26 million users ran 380,000 tasks. That's like 68 users per task. How many users do you need to run a quantum computer? One to calculate the result on their phone and 67 to write a press release? I call bullshit on this. But just in case, if you're one of those 26 million, go and check out my quiz platform. You can actually use it. Then again, I'm just some random YouTuber, so what do I know? Better listen to the experts. I mean, what about this headline? IBM should be worried. Turns out that this quote comes from no one. They just put quote marks around it because I don't know why. The worried US intelligence community veteran is now CEO of a company that sells protection from quantum computers, so maybe not the most unbiased source. And the claim from CNBC that banks might not be able to keep transactions private is wrong, because we do have protocols that can't be cracked even by quantum computers. This is called post-quantum cryptography, and financial systems are already in the process of switching to those. Okay, but it's not all hot air, I think. The biggest announcement came just last week, when a Chinese research center announced plans for a quantum computer that, they say, will reach 5,000 qubits, called the EasyQ Engine 2.0. For context, IBM already last year announced a chip with somewhat over 1,000 qubits called the Condor chip, and just the other week I told you about their plans to scale this up to some hundred thousand qubits, though we haven't actually seen those plans. We also haven't seen any evidence that IBM can even control these 1,000 qubits, or that anyone can for that matter, because it's one thing to lump together qubits on a chip, another thing entirely to actually do something with them. Another supposed Chinese advancement that was just reported is that China pushes quantum computing towards industrial use. For example, with hybrid quantum classical use for image analysis. Again, that sounds good, but a general problem with these hybrid quantum classical uses is that you don't actually need the quantum part. It's like saying, look, this teleprompter is basically a beam splitter, so this is a quantum video. Not a joke. The teleprompter works with a semi-transparent glass that's basically a beam splitter, just not at lab quality. But I digress. What I meant to say is that most of these hybrid quantum classical calculations are about as quantum as I am. The bottom line is that we still haven't seen a solution to the problem of how to scale these devices to a size at which they'll be better than a conventional computer at something useful. Why the Chinese are throwing money at this is anybody's guess. 
maybe just to piss off the Americans. And really, who can blame them? My husband and I, we recently had our wedding anniversary, the 19th, and I had the perfect gift. It's a star map of the night sky on our wedding day at the place we got married. This comes from a company called Under Lucky Stars who've been sponsoring this video. The poster comes with the frame and the cover and here you see it hanging on the wall. It looks really great and we're super happy with it. It's not like they just guess the position of the stars. They calculate them and have them verified for accuracy by a NASA astronomer. You can choose the design for the poster from a variety of styles and also add your own text to it. And it looks in reality how it looks on their website. These posters are great memories of special moments and gifts not just for science lovers. I think this solves my birthday gift problems for the next year. If you can think of some people who might like this too, maybe yourself, go and check out their website underluckystars.com and get your own personal star map. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.